What's up everyone, Justin here, to do a sad video. <coughs> uh, this is my tribute, I had to do this video, this is my tribute to Carrie Fisher, sadly she passed away uh, today on December 27th, and yes, today is the 27th, just had to check. So, yesterday, I watched some entertainment shows, time to time. I love watching gossip shows, I will admit that. I enjoy it. But, from time to time, I do watch them. I'm talking about TMZ, Entertainment Tonight, stuff like that. Shows like that. Anyways, on Monday, I heard that Carrie Fisher was in stable condition... Well, that was not true, obviously, because then she went to die if she was in stable condition. So, I don't know, the family must have hid that information, I don't know. But I might just, this is going to be a tribute to Carrie Fisher, a great lady, funny lady, smart lady, good actress, of course. She's iconic for playing the role of Princess Leia in the Star Wars movies. She was born October 21st, 1956. At 20 years old, I believe, she was told she suffered from bipolar disorder. And she didn't want to accept that. So I believe she got involved in her career probably in the 70s. She got involved with alcohol abuse and drug abuse, but gladly she cleaned herself up and was sober for a long, long time. So then, at age 29, she finally accepted that she has bipolar disorder, and then she started writing books about it, trying to help people that have it and suffer from bipolar disorder. She wrote a lot of books, at least two books about it, to help people. One of her books that she wrote about her relationship w growing up in Hollywood with her and her mother. Her mother was Debbie Reynolds, an actress and a singer. So then that book and where she wrote about her relationship, which was not always good, growing up with her mother, they would fight a lot. And that was made into a movie. And that movie is called, let's see here, if I can get this information up. So the book was called, no, that's her autobiography. It's a lot, a lot of writing on this page about her. A lot of information. So in 1987, Carrie Fisher published her first novel, Postcards from the Edge. The book was a sense and is summarized that she fictionalized the, her real life events, such as her drug addiction in the late 70s and her relationship with her mother. It became a bestseller. She received the Los Angeles Pen Award for the best first novel also during 1987. She was in a movie, Australian film, called The Time Guardian. And she's in a lot of movies. In 1990, Columbia Pictures released the film version of her book, Postcards from the Edge. And uh, the screen, Carrie Fisher wrote the script in, to it, and in the screenplay, it starred Meryl Streep, Shirley MacLaine, and Dennis Quaid. So, her book was made into a movie, that's cool. Uh, she was in a ton of movies. She wasn't just famous, yes, Star Wars is the most famous role Carrie Fisher ever played, but she was in a lot of other movies. Let me read some of them to you. 
So it started, her first movie was in 1975. Her first ever movie is Shampoo. And she did three Star Wars movies. Excuse me, in 1977, the first Star Wars. She, of course, played Princess Leia. Then in 1980, she was in The Empire Strikes Back again as Princess Leia. 1980 again. Same year, 1980, she was in The Blues Brothers as a mystery woman. That was a great, funny role that she played in Blues Brothers. I love that movie. It's one of my favorite movies. Basically, she was like a stalker, psycho ex-girlfriend of Dan Aykroyd's character in Blues Brothers. And the entire movie, Carrie Fisher basically was trying to murder Dan Aykroyd. It was funny as hell. At one point in the movie she even had a bazooka like a giant bazooka and she shot a freaking rocket out of it and tried to kill Dan Aykroyd at a building. It was funny as hell. And then of course Dan Aykroyd kept escaping death and then Carrie Fisher would get in her car and drive away and run away. It was damn funny. So she was great in Blues Brothers 1981 she was in a movie called Under the Rainbow 1983, she was in Return of the Jedi, the third Star Wars movie. And 84, she's in Garbo Talks. 1985, she's in The Man with One Red Shoe. A lot of these movies I've never heard of, but who cares? She was in them. 1986, she's in Hannah and Her Sisters. 1986, she's in Hollywood Vice Squad. And just a ton of movies. Uh, with, um, I believe Tom Hanks was in this. The Birds. Or Birds. B U R B S. She was in that. 1989, she was in Loverboy. 1989, she was in When Harry Met Sally. Uh, she was in the movie Hook in 1991. Or she might have wrote some of that movie. I'm not sure. And then from 1991, she wasn't in many movies at all. I don't know, maybe she took time off, maybe she was just writing scripts. And she was a very successful writer. She wasn't just an actress. She wrote a lot of books, wrote a lot of movies, wrote a lot of screenplays, stuff like that. So 1997, she was in Austin Powers, International Man of Mystery. I didn't know that. 2000, she was in Scream 3. 2001, she's in Heartbreakers. I believe that movie's with Sigourney Weaver and Jennifer Love Hewitt. I think. She was even in uh, 2001 again. Same year. She's in Jay and Silent Bob Strikes Back. And she's in Charlie's Angels Full Throttle in 2003. And then, of course, in 2015... She returned to play her role in the Star in Star Wars: The Force Awakens. She returned to Star Wars, and she was in another Star Wars that will come out in 2017, I believe. Star Wars Episode Five, Six, Seven, Episode Eight. So she'll be in um, the next Star Wars. I believe she'll be in it. Or, I think she's in the one that just recently came out this December 2016. Television roles. She was in a lot of television. She was on the host of Saturday Night, Saturday Night Live in 1978. She was in Laverne and Shirley. She was in a lot of shows. She's in Frasier. Had, I believe, one role... One episode of Frasier, 1995. One episode of Ellen as herself. She was in an episode of Sex and the City in 2000 as herself. She was in a Family Guy. She was a voice of Angela and Family Guy for about 11 years. She did 20 episodes of Family Guy as a voice of one of the characters. I don't watch Family Guy, so I wouldn't know. 
She's in Entourage, as I believe for one episode. So she had a very long, long, successful career in Hollywood. It's just, it's very sad. I was never the biggest Star Wars fan, but Carrie Fisher, she had a lot to do with making Star Wars a success. Because how she looked and how they dressed her. Especially in one of the Star Wars movies, she's dressed in a bikini. My opinion, Carrie Fisher had a lot to do with the success of Star Wars because she was a sex symbol in the 70s and 80s. She was very, very attractive, beautiful woman Carrie Fisher was in the 70s and 80s. Even in the 90s, she didn't look that bad. And I'm not going to comment on how she looked in the new Star Wars. She was a lot older, so I didn't expect her to look good. So here's some news about her death. She died today on the 27th at 8.55 a.m. Local time in Los Angeles. I don't know who knows that. To be reporting the time that she died, that's weird. Maybe her family reported that. Anyways, it's a big loss, huge loss. I would be really heartbroken if I was a big Star Wars fan. I'd be really heartbroken. I'm very sad. It's it's very sad. It's uh, tragic. Not just Carrie Fisher, but what has happened in 2016. 2016 has been a curse. I, I don't know what the hell it's been. I mean, you had George Michael. He just passed away on, on Christmas. And now Carrie Fisher passes away two days after George Michael. And then we lost David Bowie and Prince and the wrestler China. And so many deaths. So many deaths from Hollywood and entertainment in 2016. It's it's been awful. I mean, if you're a fan of the uh, actors and entertainment and entertainers and singers, it's been an awful year. So this is from TMZ. It says they're reporting that Carrie Fisher never improved from the time she was rushed to UC LA Medical Center. <clears throat> Sources familiar with the situation tell TMZ. They were told she was unresponsive from the time she suffered the massive heart attack on the United flight to the time she died. When reports surfaced, she was in stable condition. The reality was her condition did not improve. That's sad to hear. Because I thought she was in stable condition. I thought she was going to pull through and fight and make a full recovery that would have been great but it didn't happen sadly TMZ broke the story that Carrie went into cardiac arrest on Friday 15 minutes before her plane landed I don't know how TMZ finds this news out I guess people on the plane reported to TMZ to try to get paid. I don't know how the hell TMZ finds out news like this. 15 minutes before a plane even landed, TMZ knew. How is that? I don't know. I don't know where they get their information from, but TMZ is nuts. They're like they're like vultures. They're like they are like bloodsuckers. Or if you they they hear about news faster than anybody. I'm talking about entertainment news. They report on it first, basically all the time. And they find out quick if somebody's passed away or if somebody got arrested. TMZ reports on it in like one second, like that. So, LAX passion, passengers on the flight told TMZ Fisher seemed lifeless on the flight. And then they were told it took... 
a good 10 minutes to get her pulse back. Very sad. Very, very sad. Carrie Fisher is married twice, I believe. Once or twice. She's married to Paul Simon, famous singer. She dated Dan Aykroyd. She had an affair, she claims, with Harrison Ford. And I believe that because they were together in the Star Wars movies. And I'm sure they were attracted to each other. I mean, any guy, watch those Star Wars movies back, the first three, watch those Star Wars movies back, watch them back. And if any guy does not think Carrie Fisher was attractive, well, then you're not a straight man, in my opinion. You're not straight. If you don't think she was attractive in the first three Star Wars movies, she was damn attractive. She was very, very, very hot, in my opinion. Just very sad news. Carrie Fisher passed away two days after Christmas. Yes, it's still 2016. In 2016, you can go straight to fucking hell. You can go straight to hell 2016. Straight to hell. I want 2016 to be over immediately. No more deaths of icons and that have been in entertainment or in Hollywood. No no more deaths. I don't want to hear any more deaths. I don't want to do any more tributes to famous people passing away. I was a fan of Carrie Fisher. She seemed like a really nice lady. She seemed really funny, great sense of humor. And her in the 70s and 80s, she was very, very sexy. That's all I'm going to say. You got a great career, Carrie Fisher. Rest in peace and may the force be with you.